Hey, my name is Michael Thomas. I'm a developer with Wither Studios, and this is uh, Amir. It's a psychological horror game I'm currently developing. And this uh, whole video is just pretty much going to be me talking over some pre-cut footage I, I took earlier of the demo. So the story set of the games you actually play is this character right here, uh, who's named Will. And uh, Will's found himself trapped inside this strange mansion, and there's these different doors, and behind each door is a different dimension with its own mystery that you have to solve. And that's that's pretty much how the game plays through. You're solving these different mysteries while revealing the overall, like, why you're there and whether or not you can escape. And uh, in this bit here, the player is just kind of able to walk around, uh, get introduced to some of the controls. You're able to kind of, like, examine different things in the environment, like right there. And our game does have uh, inventory management, as you can see coming up right here. So Amir takes a lot of inspiration from older survival horror games, like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, uh, Clock Tower, if you'd like to include that. Uh, and So yeah, it has that inventory management type of element to it. And this beginning segment right here was just sort of a small puzzle. Yeah, the player had to kind of go and grab the doorknob and put it under the door. And this hall right here and here just kind of alludes to some other elements further into the game. Uh, once we actually get into the mansion, you'll see some of the doors, which I was uh, talking about earlier. And this right here is the stained glass room, uh, and it serves as the introduction to the shining trapezohedron, which you'll be getting right here. Uh, it serves uh, multiple purposes. It kind of helps you to solve different mysteries. Uh, you can use it to defend yourself. And uh, its most basic form is to pretty much provide you light. Uh, we do have different parts of the game that are much darker than others. So we're about to move on to some of the more main mechanics of the game. You'll see right at the top left there, the player actually just got the trapezohedron. So we're about to teach him how to use it. Uh, I played with a gamepad, but you can also play with a keyboard and mouse. We support that as well. So you can equip the trapezohedron, you can put it away, you can move it around. And right here you can see uh, that we're teaching you how to pulse, which is a very important element of the game to reveal different things in the environment. So it's really important that this whole tutorial here uh, at the start of the game doesn't feel too hand-holdy. We want the player to experience these things, that way they can learn by doing, as opposed to just being told all the time. Uh, and right here you can see a, a bit of the hide mechanic, so when you're hiding you can look around. Alright, so this door right here is actually locked, so the player has to kind of find the key. I did cut out a bit of a segment there where you uh, move to the right and you can pause, and there's a clue that kind of tells you to go back to the left. So we start to get in like, the meat of the game here, so there's enemies that have like a di dynamic AI system. You're not really going to get to see too much of it uh, in this video. But basically, most of our environments are uh, a lot bigger than this one, so the AI kind of has like a, a threat system tied to it that balances difficulty, where if they stay too far from you for too long, or, or they stay around you for too long as well, we'll like push them away, or push them to get a little bit closer. Uh, and meanwhile, the player just pretty much has to avoid it, uh, or use like maybe the trapezohedron. Uh, you do have a handgun, I don't think I have any footage of using it. But its use is fairly limited because yeah, you have to find ammo, which is very little of in the game. Uh, and it pretty much just kind of knocks enemies down. That way you can get away from them. So this, uh, after we run through the door, pretty much activate what we refer to as phase two of the tutorial. So you can see here that the tutorial beast is trapped. Uh, and the player kind of has to figure out a way to get around it. So right here we're about to teach one of the main mechanics of the game. So uh, there's special glyphs that you can find within the game where you can pulse to reveal. And then you can charge the trapezohedron and by holding down the pulse button you can actually perform a blast. Uh, and this blast can be used against enemies. Uh, it may have some other uses in the game as well, uh, which the player will have to pretty much figure out. Uh, yeah, so right here you're just going to do a blast, which is going to stun uh, the beast and then we can just run right past it. And there you saw some handprints kind of go along the ground. It's a little visual guide for the player to try to help them along. Generally, we try to provide like a visual and, uh, as well as audio cues to try to push the player around. So this is actually the phase three of the tutorial where we're going to teach you to 
basically the, the main mechanic of how you actually defeat the enemies in the game. So you need to find uh, a weapon to use against them, uh, which is tied to the story, and what we can do here is blast it, and then stab. So I, I made that look a lot easier than it actually is. Alright, so that was actually the end of the uh, tutorial scene, and we're moving on to the mansion. So this serves as the uh, hub world, and you'll see some of those doors that I was talking about earlier. And uh, in the demo, we actually have uh, one of the chapters uh, playable as well, which I caught a little bit of footage of. So right here, we're actually going to be teaching the player about clues and then uh, journal entries. So clues are uh, little things that you'll find throughout the uh, throughout each chapter that kind of guide you. It, it serves as like a way to kind of help the player move along in case they ever get stuck. Whereas journal entries are like main story elements that you can always look back on to see like Will's thoughts on different things uh, about things that you might have done or things that might have happened to him. So right here is actually uh, one of the doors I was talking about, and uh, the way the door looks is uh, a bit of a hint about what's actually behind it. Uh, so in the demo, only since only one chapter is actually playable, uh, you're not going to see what's behind all these other doors. So you're actually about to see the player use that shard that they obtained earlier on this little pedestal that kind of rose out right here, and this... Uh, kind of shows you what's going to actually be the main goal of the game. So you're finding these different shards, you're putting them into this pedestal, and uh, that'll kind of like take you to the end game segment. And we actually have different endings in the game, which uh, which one you get depends on how you treated the different uh, rates in the game and other decisions you might have made. So this right here is what we call the safe room. Uh, and that right, that guy right there is the safe room guy. He's a, a recurring character. You'll be coming back here to, well, obviously, like, save the game. Uh, but he also serves uh, various other story purposes. And and we have dialogue. I, I skipped through a lot of the dialogue here. It was all cut. Uh, and you can, he gives you a key here to one of the doors. <laughs> Couple more doors here that we can see. Coming up here, we're about to unlock this door, which goes into the uh, a, the chapter that we actually have playable within the full demo of the game. I, I don't have too much footage of it, but there's a, a little bit here that we'll get to see. A couple other mechanics of the game that I just wanted to show off. And, and right here you can see some of that Resident Evil inspiration in action. The game actually takes a lot of inspiration from not just other video games, but also uh, books, movies as well. Uh, I got some footage right here of another mechanic. This is the first time you actually see this happening. So we have these different in-game uh, little moments that you have that you can reveal and see through the power of the trapezohedron. Some of them actually play like uh, little cutscenes that go over top of everything else. And coming up right here, I'm actually going to be showing off how there's other NPCs in the game that you can interact with. Not every NPC uh, is going to be your enemy. Some of them might be able to help you. You might even encounter some chapters where you have to figure out uh, who the main enemy character is that you eventually have to overcome. The goal for the game is so that like every door, you never know what you're going to find behind each one. Uh, we want each one to feel very distinct, not just in the environment, but uh, in the mystery as well. So right here is actually the introduction for the fireman, which is the main enemy of the apartments. And we pretty much give the player control right after that whole thing there happens, so they could actually run away and they might not actually see him. Uh, we try to... It, it's just one way of building the atmosphere and the tension. Alright, so that's actually pretty much the video. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it off right here. Uh, this final cut here, you'll see uh, what might happen if the fireman catches you. So uh, thanks for checking it out.